Hello, we are continuing our journey in the world of free artos, and we are happy to have you with us. In the previous videos, we looked at how to create tasks and how semaphores can be used to communicate between an interrupt handler and a thread. Now we'll create a program where two tasks running in parallel will use a display. Let's get started. In the lecture 22 tasks folder is the example code for the presentation of the scheduler. Open the project. We will create three tasks in the cube MX. Blinky task indicates that the program is running by blinking the LEDs, just as before. Display task draws a circular arc that gradually increases in length until it forms a full circle, then begins to shrink. This animation repeats in a loop. The third task first reads the LM75 temperature sensor, displays the temperature on the screen for one second, and then blocks the display task from running for two seconds. The scheduler is responsible for the execution of each task based on various factors such as priority and readiness. Sometimes, multiple tasks may need access to the same resource simultaneously. In this case, of course we must prevent these two threads from using the same peripheral at the same time, since the peripheral itself can only execute one task at a time. The solution is to mutually exclude these two or more tasks from using the resource meaning only one task can use the resource at a time, ensuring safe and predictable system behavior. This programming tool is called Mutex, which is short for the term Mutual Exclusion. Mutex can be considered an improved semaphore, but there is a difference in the way it is created. You have to call the x semaphore create mutex function to do this, instead of x semaphore create binary. Other than that, a mutex is still acquired and released using the familiar x semaphore take and x semaphore give functions. A mutex differs from binary semaphores in two important ways. First, it provides the protection against priority inversion, which we'll explain in more detail later. Second, it can only be released by the task that acquired it. This makes sense since only the task that uses the resource knows when it's done with it. A task cannot release a mutex it doesn't acquire, when another task still wants to use that protected resource. If mutual exclusion were not used between the display and temperature tasks, anomalies would appear on the OLED display connected to the I2C peripheral because of the parallelization. To create a mutex, we need to do the following. In the project, let's open the CubeMX interface. In the FreeRTOS Mutexes tab, create a new object called I2C Mutex. From now on, we can use it the same way we use a semaphore. Confirm the changes and generate the code. The functions implementing the tasks are located in the usual place in the FreeRTOS.c file. Let's have a look at what the temperature task function does. If the mutex is successfully acquired, then the program will write the temperature measured by the thermometer sensor in degrees Celsius on the OLED display for 3 seconds. After that, the task will enter blocked state for 2 seconds. In the display task, the drawing of the circular arc is done by the OLED draw arc function. If the temperature task is not holding the mutex, we clear the display, draw the arc, apply the changes, then release the mutex and wait for 10 milliseconds. Priority of the blinky task is OS priority low, the temp tasks is OS priority normal, and the display task is OS priority high. There is nothing left to do but see if our program works. I ask you the usual question. Let's upload the code. Apparently, the programming LED is blinking, so we just have to wait for the bits to travel through the USB cable. Although they are traveling at the speed of light, it still takes a moment. Very good, the program is already running. It seems that the blinky task is working continuously, so there's no problem with the timing between the tasks. Also, the display shows the correct operation. Now we see the temperature, 
Meanwhile, we don't draw the arc. Then we draw the arc again, and the temperature is displayed just as we have planned. Now let's modify the VTask delay function in the temperature task to hell delay and set the parameter to 3000, which means 3 seconds. Let's see what has changed with this modification. This means, of course, another build and upload. The bits are traveling again. And now the code is running. The circle has started to form, but when the temperature is displayed, the LEDs stop running. This is because the HAL delay is not an OS level, but a processor level weight. It does not cause the given task to give up running, meaning other lower priority tasks do not get processor time. Since the blinky task has lower priority, it will not run during these 3 seconds. So it is better to implement the weighting in the tasks with the VTask delay function. Now we can also use mutexes, although we haven't really discussed how exactly they differ from binary semaphores. This is where the phenomenon of priority inversion comes into the picture, but we will only take a closer look at it in the next video. See you there! Bye! Bye.